in my holidays then when college and schools were open then accordingly ishraq and then i used to sit after maghrib on my study chair in my young life and just used to get up for tahajjud then for fajr and then for ishraq and then have breakfast and to used to go to my school that's it so don't take these things as difficulties these are just requirements of your pre preparatory requirements these are essential requirements to prepare for some good thing look at the life of every prophet every wali every yusuf where sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam was thrown then he was imprisoned for 9 years and finally finally he uh, received the place where he was supposed to go and sayyidina daud sayyidina musa alayhi salam and sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam from country to country city to city what happened to other prophets sayyidina zakaria alayhi salam sayyidina yahya alayhi salam what happened to sayyidina nuh alayhi salam so the whole life is full of mehna riyada and hijra and all all ya sayyidina imam abu lasan ashazili thrown out from his city spent life years in the in the sea and there he got the revelation spiritual revelation hizbul bahr look at imam bayezid al bistami thrown out of his city imam ghazali given a big verdict against him and he was put in problems imam ahmad bin hanbal in prison imam e azam abu hanifa in prison they got punishments they, they were given the punishment of stripes imam ahmad bin hanbal and all great oliya of that time so try to change your life and try to love difficulties try to love inconveniences try to love with all difficult circumstances love the difficult circumstances almighty allah will open the door of easiness for you inna ma al usri yusran inna ma al usri yusra the door of easiness opens only after the you cross through pass through the door of hardship easiness comes after hardships and difficulties and what kind of difficulties and hardships for deen for ilm for taqwa for purity for purity try to bring purity in your life try to be pious in your young life this is easy at this time and if you start repenting when you grow older then the time would be lost my dear daughters and my dear sons be like this so that angels may come to see you and if you become pious then maybe you become the reason of my forgiveness because i have nothing i have no good act in my life i have nothing with me which i could present in front of almighty allah i am ashamed i could do nothing in my life to please my my lord and to please my beloved prophet i feel my life is just a failure nothing i could do nothing for my lord for allah and his prophet everyone has to die i think just do something for yourself and do something for myself if you become pious and you become people of jannah and almighty allah is pleased with you then maybe you see me at that time on the day of resurrection that angels were taking me to throw me in the hell hell fire maybe any one of you would see at that time that he is the person he is the man who used to give us lecture on alhidaya he used to teach us good things 
and we became pious because of his request, his teaching, his instruction. Maybe at that time you stand up and you do intercession and request Almighty Allah, O oh Lord, if you are sending us to Jannah, please forgive this sinful man, forgive this man. We became good and pious because of his teaching. So maybe because of your intercession and shafa'ah, I will get forgiveness and get rid of hellfire. Otherwise, my own life and my own a'mal and my acts, they deserve hellfire. As far as my life and my acts are concerned, I deserve hellfire. Not more than that. Maybe you become intercessors for me. Become the means of forgiveness and pardon for me. Just coming here, sitting, listening to me, getting the lectures, notes, going back without any practical and real change in life will make me more shameful. I will think as if there is no effect in my preaching, in my words. I couldn't change you. If you don't change, this is not your failure, this is my failure. You are not at fault. If you don't become pious, this is not your fault. I swear by God, this is not your fault. This is my fault, my deficiency, because of my sins. My words don't have any effectivity. That's why you couldn't change yourself. And if you change yourself and become pious, God-fearing, worshipping, good worshippers, good servants Allah, sincere, faithful and loyal servants of Almighty Allah and slaves of Almighty Allah and you start hating these attractions of world and you start loving the attractions of life hereafter. Live in dunya but be become friends of Akhira. Live in dunya but remain friends of Akhira. Don't be friends of dunya. You may live in dunya but don't let dunya live into your heart. You live in dunya, but don't let dunya to live in your heart. I am repeating, I am repeating, live in dunya, in this world, but don't let this world enter into your heart. Take this love and attraction of world from your heart out. Just your bodies should remain in dunya and your soul and spirit should remain in al-mala ul-a'la. Change your priorities, change your attractions, change your likings and dislikings and become the people of Akhira. Become the people of Akhira. And those my sons and daughters who can go further, who can go beyond this, then for them I would recommend go beyond Akhira and become the lovers of his beauty. Become the beggars of his pardon, beggars of his player. Live for his player, Allah's player. Live for his nearness. If you live for him, if you live for him, you love him, you live for him, your all likings, your all priorities, your all acts, everything is just for him and towards him. 